Hi all. In this lecture, we will be creating our first data model in Simaki XT. But before that, we need to cover a few key concepts. So let's start with data types. So Simaki offer multiple data types. Um, first would be your built-in data type like string, integer, decimals, etc., which comes out of the box. Second, you have got list of values or LOV, which are like lookups, and they are used for data quality checks. So LOVs could be your static reference data, like gender codes, country codes, etc. Third, you can create your own user-defined data type based on your specific needs. So let's say for an example, you have got a zip code, which is always string and always five characters long. So you can define that user-defined uh, zip code type and then enforce the checks so that whichever, whichever data comes in is validated against this zip code type. Fourth would be your complex type which contains multiple attributes. When we talk about an address, it never is always a single field. It always comes with multiple fields. So they can all be grouped together in one single unit and you can call them or give it a name which we call display name here uh, as simple address type. Moving to the next slide, entities. So, entities um, are the logical entities here in Simaki. We do not create physical entities. Uh, and there are three types of entities which are offered by uh, Simaki. First is basic entities, which are simpler and faster. So, whenever you create any type of entity, whether it is basic, ID matching, or fuzzy, it always creates multiple entities or tables alongside with it. It, all, it is not always a single entity or single table in, in physical world. So that's why it says fewer tables in data location when you create a basic entity. It is, all, it is used when there is a single source of master data or when you have reference data like your countries, marital status, gender, counties, etc. Second type of entity is ID matching. So when you have multiple siloed systems, but they still have a common identifier, let's say customer ID, in that case, you can use ID matching entity. So it says it is used when you have a common ID across applications in the enterprise. No matcher is needed because you have already matched the records based on the customer ID. In case there are multiple attributes which can club together to form that composite key, you can do that in ID matching. And for basic entities and ID matching, you can create your user-defined primary key as well. For third one would be your fuzzy matching or the most common that we see in, in MDM world. Here, you do not have a common ID across all the systems. There has to be match rules defined to actually identify them that they are part of the same group. So you, they do not share the common IDs. Um, they have to be different match rule based on the data quality or the profiling that we will be doing. In this case, Simaki XTM generates a unique golden ID. You cannot define your own custom golden uh, primary key. You have to rely on Simaki to create those uh, unique golden IDs. And it is used for application consolidation use case when you have multiple silo system and they all have different version of customer data, let's say, with their own business rules. In that case, if you want a master data version of all your customers, then you have to create the fuzzy matching entity. Moving further, references. These are just like your database primary foreign key relationships. You need to create references between your entities that you have created in your Simaki data model. These references will be used for creating hierarchy. So let's say it could be a self hierarchy self-reference hierarchy or it could be between multiple entities. So an example for a self-referencing hierarchy would be manager employee. So whoever reports to the manager and manager reports to his manager, that kind of hierarchy, which we have seen in databases as well, could be created very easily in, in Simaki. Referential integrity is enforced in data certification or data integration process. So if you load a mandatory relationship and you miss out, the, the foreign key or parent key, it will error out. Let's go to Simaki and create our first data model. If I go to the application, I'll refresh it to see if I'm still logged in. I am. So, 
we have to create our data model and all our rules, enrichers, validations, etc. in application builder. So if I click on application builder, this is the first thing that I will see. I can open an existing model edition. I can build a new data model or I can import it from a zip file. Let's say you have got your data model in your local drive from someone else and you want to import it. You can do that as well. In our case, we will create a new model. We will give it a name as customer data model. Please follow uh, camel case naming convention. Uh, you can click this autofill so that your label gets automatically populated. And always try to give a decent description so that it is uh, understood by everyone else as well. This is a customer data model. I'll say finish. Now, all these things we will be creating one by one in our upcoming lectures. But first, let's create one entity. So if I right click on entities here, I'll add entity. Now, if we see, we have to give the name of this entity. So I will say customer. And if you see, because of this autofill, the label are automatically being populated. So if I say customer, then all these fields are populated. It is extending any entity? No, it is not. The physical table name, it gets populated on its own as well. So this is what you will be seeing in your database once you try to access your data location. And now, as we said, there are three types of entities, basic, ID matching, and fuzzy matched. So we will mark this entity customer as fuzzy matched. And it gives a brief description as well. Now there are two other options. You can mark this if you want. So you can historize your golden record so that you can see all the changes that have been done over the time in your golden record. Let's say when you have a new source system added um, after your consolidation and then that also gets part of your golden record. The golden record values might change. Kind of those things. Or someone has authored it or someone has changed it manually from web UI. So if you want to track all those changes, you can check this checkbox. But for our course, we won't be doing it. So if I click next, then this asks about that primary key attribute. So it has given the suggestion that customer ID can be created as primary key. If you want to change it, you can. So if you see here, it, it says that golden ID generation would start from 1. It has given a number. Or you can use UUID as well. Or you can create a SEM SQL. SEM SQL is similar to SQL in database. But you can give an expression based on your specific needs if you want. We will click finish here. And now our entity has been created with custom money but it still hasn't got any attributes at this point. If you see, there's an asterisk here, which means the entity has still not yet been saved. So I will go ahead here and save it. Now, I'll create few attributes here. So if I click on attributes, I can see the primary key has already been created with long integer. So if you see here, the first thing, it says simple attribute, and the second one would be complex attribute. We talked about this in, in our presentation. So complex attribute could be your address types, etc. And your simple attribute could be your name, email, contact details, etc. So let's create simple attribute. So I will give it first name. Or better I would give it like this in camel case notation. And you can give the description as well first name of customer. Now this would be the physical column name. Now what kind of data type you want it to be. So I will keep it as string with 128. Is it mandatory? Yes. So now it asks for your validation score. When do you want to check it? So 
if your source data needs to be validated, you can click or check this pre consolidation on it. Or let's say after the consolidation or all your rules have been applied, it gets blank or it gets null as value. Then you can check for post consolidation or you can have pre and post consolidation that it shouldn't be null at the end so that the end user won't be seeing a null value in your first. I'll keep it as pre consolidation for this and click finish. So now a simple attribute with string data type has been created. It's a mandatory field. I'll create few other fields like last name, customer, mandatory. Oh, no, I won't be keeping this as mandatory. Finish. The last field would be occupation. Finish. I'll save this. Please keep saving your work always. So now we have created one entity, a fuzzy mashed entity, and few attributes for this. We'll continue to create few other entities and relationships with those in our next lecture. Thank you.